So this video was a little too long for that last section, so we'll go ahead and just watch it in this section. And in the video, there's some details you don't need to know, uh, and I'll kind of point those out as the video uh, progresses. The volume up for you. All right, and let's start. Every cell in your body is produced by cell division. Before each cell divides, it must copy its genetic material in a process called DNA replication. Understanding of DNA replication comes largely from studies of E. coli, bacteria that are found by the billions in your large intestine. Let's take a look at how DNA replication occurs in an E. coli cell. As we zoom in, we see the DNA. At the origin of replication, the two strands of DNA separate, serving as templates for making new strands. The result is a replication bubble. The bubble grows in both directions, forming two replication forks. Let's zoom in on one of them. Many proteins work together at the replication fork. Only some are shown. Here, the DNA is unwound, and DNA polymerases, shown in orange, build new strands of DNA. Original parental DNA strands are shown in dark blue. Newly formed DNA strands are shown in light blue. Because strands in a DNA double helix run in opposite directions, the new strands must be made in different ways. One new strand, the leading strand, is built continuously. The other new strand, the lagging strand, is built in pieces. First, let's focus on the leading strand. DNA polymerase builds a new strand of DNA by adding DNA nucleotides one at a time. Each new nucleotide must pair up with its complementary nucleotide on the parental strand. Adding new nucleotides works the same way on both the leading and lagging strands. Each piece of the lagging strand begins with a short segment of RNA, shown in red. A clamp surrounds the RNA and attaches to DNA polymerase, which builds the rest of the new piece as DNA. When the piece is finished, it is released from DNA polymerase. How are pieces of the lagging strand joined together? A different DNA polymerase removes RNA and replaces it with DNA. However, it cannot finish connecting the pieces. An enzyme called DNA ligase joins the pieces together. Growth of the leading and lagging strands continues on both sides of the replication bubble until there are two identical DNA molecules. Although bacteria are very different from humans, the process of DNA replication in bacteria is similar to what happens in your own cells. Okay, so one of the details here is the synthesis of the lagging strand. I'm not really going to ask you probably anything about that, but what I do want you to know, or well, much about that, is there are two strands that are being produced, the leading strand and the lagging strand. And that's because as the DNA double helix molecule is split open, split in half <clears throat> by helicase, each half serves as a template, single-stranded template, because originally it's a double-stranded double helix molecule, but the single-stranded DNA molecule is a template 
for the synthesis of the missing strand so that you get a complete double helix molecule synthesized. And then dark blue is the original older parental strand, and then light blue is the newer uh, daughter strand. And the enzyme that's doing that is DNA polymerase. The other strand, excuse me, here we go. The other strand is um, converted or uh, uh, per, uh, made into a double helix molecule in a somewhat different way because of the way the DNA a polymerase molecule attaches and it synthesizes bit by bit. On the leading strand, the synthesis of the double helix molecule is continuous. On the lagging strand, it's discontinuous, but the overall process is very similar in the sense that it's the DNA polymerase molecule that's bringing in the nucleotides. And on the lagging strand, it's showing you that the synthesis of the double helix is in sections, and then it's kind of completed later on. So that's all I need you to know <clears throat> about synthesis of the lagging strand. It is completed in sections, and the sections are then connected uh, to form the double helix molecule. Okay, but the other details about synthesis of the leading strand uh, the term like Okazaki fragments, uh, ligase molecule, enzyme, you don't need to know. All right. Okay, another simpler uh, video here. Simple is good. In principle, copying DNA, a process called DNA replication, is very simple. The two complementary DNA strands separate, and because each nucleotide can only pair with its complement, adenine with thymine and cytosine with guanine, each strand can be used as a template to build a new complementary strand, producing two DNA molecules. In the cell, DNA replication is a little more complicated, but the principle is the same. For clarity, we have untwisted the double helix. Remember that each DNA strand has a 3' prime and 5' prime end, and the strands run in opposite directions. DNA replication begins at specific sites called origins of replication. Proteins attach here and separate the DNA strands, forming replication bubbles, which grow in both directions. Enzymes called DNA polymerases move along the template DNA strands and catalyze the elongation of new strands. Because DNA polymerases can only assemble new DNA in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, only half of the new DNA can be synthesized in one continuous piece. The other half is synthesized in short pieces. As the replication bubbles grow, one daughter strand is synthesized continuously, while the other daughter strand is synthesized in pieces. The pieces are joined together by the enzyme DNA ligase. Eventually, all the replication bubbles merge, yielding two identical DNA molecules. So that was a bit simpler than that previous longer video. <clears throat> but again, at the site of origin, uh, replication bubble enlarges or is formed. The DNA polymerase enzyme comes in, and that's a, one of the ones I have to have you know. The enzyme helicase unzips or unwinds the double helix molecule. DNA polymerase comes in and latches onto a template, single-stranded template to synthesize the missing strand to produce a double helix molecule of DNA. The same thing happens on the other strand, the lagging strand. Don't worry about the three prime, five prime direction or five prime, three prime direction of synthesis. <clears throat> Just know that the DNA polymerase model latches onto a template, single-stranded template of DNA to synth synthesize the missing strand. And the replication bubbles eventually merge and when they reach the ends of the DNA molecule. Two complete double helices of DNA are synthesized. Um, and again, don't worry about uh, Okazaki fragments. Just know that if, even if I ask you, 
I may ask you, one strand is continuously produced, the other one is produced in segments. And the segments are linked together by that enzyme ligase. Um, and that's what they show kind of here at the very end, watch, even here. Ligase enzyme coming in to uh, uh, close any little gaps, meaning adding any potential uh, uh, covalent bonds that might be missing. Okay? All right. And yet another little video. Uh, visual aids tend to be pretty good, I think, I hope. Here you can see the simultaneous formation of the leading and lagging strands. A DNA polymerase assembles a continuous leading strand while primase, other DNA polymerases, and ligase all work together to make the lagging strand. The enzyme helicase continues to untwist the double helix, exposing more template strand DNA for replication. So a couple of comments here. Helicase in color-coded in green unzips the double helix. That's one enzyme to know. <clears throat> Sorry, DNA polymerase synthesizes a new double helix from the single strand template. Don't worry about primase. Simultaneous formation of the leading and lagging strands. A DNA polymerase assembles a continuous leading strand while prime. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. So uh, on one strand, the synthesis of the double helix, the new double helix is continuous. That's the leading strand. On the lagging strand, it's discontinuous, meaning sections of double helix, new double helix molecules are synthesized and then linked together later. Okay, but don't worry about the additional enzymes like primase here. Okay, here we go. So, DNA polymerases are enzymes that make those covalent bonds between the nucleotides, as those videos showed you. And the DNA replication begins at unique specific sites that have specific um, <clears throat> origins of replication or origins of replications okay and then those enlargen oh, i don't even know if that's a word those get larger to create what are called replication bubbles so you have multiple origins of replication on the original dna molecule so we're zoomed out here lower magnification but this is a double helix a molecule and then uh, the replication bubbles form and they enlarge in as the enzyme helicase unzips the DNA molecule at what are called replication forks. And then in red are the newly added missing strand to the single DNA templates. So this is original double helix uh, DNA molecule. It's opened up at origins of replication. The enzyme helicase at the replication forks, open them up, and then once the once the double-stranded DNA is opened up, it forms single strands. Those are the templates, the leading and the lagging strands. The enzymes, DNA polymerase, come in and latch in there and resynthesize or synthesize the missing strands. So now in red here, that's indicating the new daughter strand that's merged onto, linked onto the older parental strand. So you get two double helix molecules. And when those replication bubbles merge and hit to the hit the ends of the DNA molecule, you get one, two complete DNA molecules that are copies of the original one. Okay, this is actually a picture showing you it occurring uh, as a micrograph, microscope picture. All right. So here's your origin of replication sites. The replication bubbles open up. The parental strand here is in blue. In tan is the daughter strands, forming two daughter DNA molecules that will go into their representative or uh, 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 daughter cells that will go into each 
daughter cell produced, say through mitosis.